Hey guys, welcome to Replicode. I just wanted to make a quick video showing you how to add Firebase to your project the new way. So again, Firebase had some big upgrades to their platform and with it comes uh, some changes to the way that you integrate Firebase into your project. Uh, but it's still really, really simple. So uh, right now I've got a basic app set up just with a label, text field, and a send button. So we'll handle this stuff later. Let's go over to the dashboard on Firebase. I'm logged in. So I'm gonna create a new project. I'm gonna call it Wrap the code test project. Uh, they ask for your country now, so I'm guessing this has to do with the new analytics features. Uh, probably helps them determine what currency to track for revenue reporting and stuff. So we're going to go ahead and create the project. And this is the new dashboard. So yeah, it looks a little different to the the old dashboard, kind of with the Google material design style now. Um, I actually kind of prefer the look of the old one, but that this is this is not bad too. And they definitely are able to pack in a lot more features and you can get a feel of all the new features that you can add to your project. So pretty awesome anyways. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and click add Firebase to your iOS app. And it's gonna ask us for our bundle ID. So let's go to our project just copy the bundle identifier here. And it also asks for an app store ID, but we don't, we don't need to deal with this right now because our app isn't uh, on the app store. And it's gonna make us download a, uh, a plist file, a config file, and it's gonna just get us to pop that into our project. So here we go, just drag it in right below the info.plist. And we're good for that. Let's move on. So here's where we're gonna do the, the CocoaPods install. Um, the manual install is, is kind of complicated now. It's, it's not as simple as it was before. So I'm going with CocoaPods for now. And when I figure out the manual install, I'll make a video on that. So we're gonna need to open up Terminal and go into our project. make a pod file and hop into Xcode to edit it. And I'm going to add pod Firebase. So this is going to have the core Firebase features as well as um, the, the, the analytics features come with the pod Firebase. But the database, actually, we need to add separately because I want to do some database saving and writing. So we do Firebase database like that. So we add two and, and all the new features are kind of split up into these separate pods. So you can control which ones you want to add to your project and which ones you want to leave out. So pretty handy. Save the pod file. And in the terminal, we're just going to write pod install. Okay, so we've got Firebase added in our project now. So I'm gonna actually have to close uh, this project because the pods, the Cocoa Pods, will have created a workspace for me, and I have to open this instead. So I want to open the workspace, not the Xcode project. And you'll be familiar with this if you've used Cocoa Pods before. All right, so here we see Firebase was installed here. And we need to add Firebase and configure it in our app delegate file. So I'm going to go ahead and import Firebase. That should work. Nice. And in the application did finish launching with options. We just call Fire App Configure. Now, if I run it, we should see some prints in the console that tell us the Firebase is working properly. Awesome, so we see here that looks like Firebase is working properly without any crazy errors or anything, so that's awesome. So first let's try writing something to our Firebase database. So in my view controller.swift, I'm 
going to import Firebase and create a reference at ref. kind of new and to the ref I'm going to write whatever text is in the text field Oops. Text. so I'm going to pull up the database simulator. So if I write something here, hello, this is rep, this is code. Okay, so it didn't write. And actually, the reason is because now Firebase is adding some default rules. Before, you could always anyone could always write and read from your database by default. But they've actually added some, some basic rules here that the auth has to be not null. Or so, so you have to be authenticated somehow, whether it's you know email and password or uh, anonymous or something. But OK, I don't actually want this. I'm going to just remove that and write true for both of these and publish that. So this is not really safe, but for now, for our purposes. I'm going to try this again. Send. All right, nice. The message is, hello, this is Replicode. Now let's try retrieving that information. In the view did load, I'll write You notice I, I'm making two separate refs here uh, inside the different functions. For whatever reason, when I've tried putting it outside of a function, um, the if Firebase crashes, you know, if I, if I were to put it here and that way we don't have to, you know, make two refs in each function, but it, it crashes for some reason. So I'll have to look into that and why that is. So ref observe event type and the event type we're going to use is fire data event type value. Snapshot. And I'm going to let message equals snapshot value message Oops. as string. And then I'm going to set the label text to that message. Let's try this one more time. Here. You can see it already loaded what was previously in the message. I'm going to send something new. Like, I am not very cool. And we see it updates here and updated here. So the, the real flow of data is blah, blah, blah. When I send it, it is sending to Firebase, and then Firebase is sending it, or rather, I'm listening in the app for changes here. So it's you know the flow from here to here. And we're good. We got Firebase and a database working in our project. So thanks for watching guys.